Hey, thanks for tuning in. You're watching Life Changers, and today we're going to be hearing from the daughter of the co-founder of a ministry called Heart for Lebanon, and they partner with uh, with Operation Blessing, with CBN, CBN's Operation Blessing. So if you are not aware, um, I'm going to show you guys something that maybe you've seen on social media lately, maybe um, you've seen in direct messages or not. But this is what, um, hi Heart for Lebanon, I see you, you've joined. Hello 700 Club uh, from Nigeria. So this has been going on, you can see here, this went on. on. So that, that happened, um, I believe Tuesday, and that, you know, has been very shocking for a lot of us and well recently there was um a post done by Maylee who's going to be joining us here in a moment and she posted this and it went viral i'm going to share it with you guys now Maylee, tell us about this, and she's here now to join us. Let me add her into the conversation. And it's loading. Hi, Joshua. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for good. Having me. No, thank you for being willing. I know it's been difficult a couple of days for you and your family. Yeah. But yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the video we watched and kind of your perspective on what's been happening in Lebanon in Beirut? Yeah, uh, to be honest, it, this comes in a very, very dark context for our country. I think the world now knows about the explosion that happened on Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. But this really is coming um, after eight months of an uprising, an economic collapse, a 300 percent inflation on basic goods in the country um, and an absolute um, just dire situation for all generations um, there. And to be honest, I myself was on the streets for weeks, not end in October uh, with my friends to kind of fight this anti-corruption um, mm -hmm. with a with a really cry out a Christ like cry out to um, just order and uh, love to one another. Um, and it, that lasted for several months. I remember my grandfather gave me, gave me a handmade Lebanese flag and said, take this to the streets because you are the hope of Lebanon, the next generation. Wow. Wow. And then um, a lot of things happened since then and a lot of, a lot of political repercussions that I won't go into, uh, but the, then Tuesday happened. Tuesday happened and I had just moved out of the country a week ago um, to come and pursue, you know, this, you're the hope, you're the next generation to come and pursue my education to be able to go back and invest in my country in a better way. And then um, the explosion happens. Before that, all of my, my grandparents lost their life savings. And then my mom, just to be able to relate, I was just devastated that I wasn't there, sent me the sneak peek saying, hey, the piano's okay. And it tore me to pieces. Um, it was, it's been the cornerstone of our family. Um, it was a wedding gift mm -hmm. for, my, for my grandmother um, from her husband 60 years ago. And it was really the only thing that was unscathed. She walked into that, her apartment, saw everything destroyed, um, dusted off the piano, said, it's okay. God's still in control, I'm okay, and just sat down, could not talk to anyone, and did that. For me, it was a moment of peace that I was really looking for a sense of survivability of what's coming next. Where she was pulling her strength from was God, and I knew that, but her expression of it through music was something that really touched me intimately in our family and carried us through that day. And um, I'm just so glad that it put a face of hope, and it gave a little soundtrack of survival and hope in Christ. Yeah. That a lot of people resonated with. 
Yeah, I mean, it went viral, and it's just this sense of uh, of hope in the midst of of the chaos that we're seeing. We're hearing this this old hymn being played, and it's yeah. just beautiful. And also, it's interesting that um the Bible and like the the wedding pictures are also unscathed. So the piano and the Bible yeah. and the wedding yeah. pictures are unscathed. Absolutely, and um, Heart for Lebanon's motto actually is hope in the midst of despair, moving people from despair to hope is what is always at the core of everything that we do, hope in Christ and Christ alone. And um, even though this was a personal symbol as a family, it really resonated with the heart of the ministry that was founded in um, 2006. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that and then I'll, I'll show some pictures of you guys in action. Yeah, um, so H4L was founded in 2006 um, as a response to um, the crisis, the July 2006 war that happened in uh, Lebanon then. And it really started as a grassroots movement. Um, and I remember as a young girl, I was 13 at the time, uh, we went door to door on the border uh, and the northern border of Lebanon giving out uh, handing out just kind of sweaters and coats and um, carpets to folks who uh, were affected by that war. And um, on an airplane back from the States going back, my mom asked my dad, she's like, are we, are we crazy to go back to Lebanon? And, and she looked at him and she said, no, um, we have a heart for Lebanon. And that was really at the essence and at the core of what started. And God had really prepared the ministry to respond to the Iraqi refugee crisis uh, a few years later. Uh, and then um, not knowing what was going to happen in Syria, the Syrian refugee crisis um, in 2011, serving over 30,000 refugees on a monthly basis. But today, um, and over the last few months, with what has been going on in Lebanon, we are called Heart for Lebanon because we want to help every marginalized person and community um, and uh, person in need right now. And so responding to the latest explosion in Lebanon and to our communities and to rebuilding the churches as much as we can through the services and the programs is at the heart of what we do. Yeah, and, and I was mentioning earlier that you, you've been in partnership with Operation Blessing yes. for a while. And also, I heard uh, Orphan's Promise as well on the education side of things. Yes, it's been. So to, be, to give you a little bit of a perspective on that, so because of Operation Blessing's um, partnership several years ago, uh, which was the largest consistent um, partnership for many years, uh, we were able to purchase the hub and Operation Blessing helped us do that. And that hub right now is the warehouse that is um, housing all of the basic goods, the basic needs that we are putting there to be able to distribute. H4L is distributing linens and mattresses and wow. uh, a basic food and hygiene kits right now. Um, so if it weren't for that hub, and miraculously that hub was um, not um, destroyed by the explosion, only the gate was uh, derailed, but everything inside is intact. So that really goes back to the heart of the partnership between the two organizations. And also in the education sector, as you mentioned, um, a longstanding partnership and giving non-formal, helping uh, uh, teachers in Lebanon uh, provide non-formal, basic, uh, Bible-based uh, uh, education for Syrian refugee children. Yeah, that's really good. And I, ha I have here this logo for y'all to see if you text, if you go, sorry, not text, if you go to yeah. org slash OB crisis, you can help. Yeah, um, thank you. Now. Um, but I also wanted to share some of the pictures that you sent me earlier, like kind yeah. of like, oh, you guys in action and cleaning up. Um, we see this one. Can you tell us about it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so this is a really good, I'm glad you put up this photo. Um, people probably have been seeing on the internet a lot of um, the scope and the magnitude of the explosion. I mean, it's it's been rated as one of the top five is explosion historically in the world, having an earthquake scale of 3.5 and um, just the diameter of it wiping out the entire capital. But what's really um, unique to it as well is um, that coastline is packed with Christian neighborhoods, with churches and um, that have been completely um, affected by what has happened. And um, it's not a suburb at all. 50% uh, is estimated of Lebanon's total population lives there. And Ashrafiyya, which is the capital of Beirut, which is only two kilometers from the explosion, is actually uh, historically been known in Lebanon as a, a, a Christian stronghold area and has been completely destroyed. And so uh, the H4L team in the picture that you just saw uh, rushed to uh, kind of was prioritizing and trying 
trying to assess the need, uh, assess the situation of the churches that are the closest, from the closest to the furthest, to be able to clean up and help because um, the priority was really to be able to free the church and mobilize them to do and be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we did not want them to worry about mm -hmm. the cleanup, did yeah. not want them to worry about the debris. We will do that so they can go and minister to those um, around them. Now, I would like to say something here uh, that every person in the church and the leaders and the pastors are also working through their own trauma as this is all going on. Um, and and I, that's a huge prayer request because there, there is, uh, we don't want to give in to the hopelessness. Um, my dad uh, said that this morning. He's on the field leading the team there. We don't want to give in to the hopelessness. We want to serve and we want to be able to show the hope of Christ. But also mm -hmm. there is a big emotional trauma that everyone is dealing with in the church and the surroundings that uh, is a huge need for prayer. Yeah, yeah. As Even as you, you're talking, like, I, I just can't imagine what, it, what it's like to have everything around you explode and um it is it is really shaking for all of us um i know you were telling me earlier that there's this picture of you you showed me um <laughs> you're, you're in in yeah. a nice beautiful street you can't see the full picture here um but now that street is completely like yeah i mean um so I was, you know, I born and raised in Lebanon, uh, the and the area. That's our hometown. That's that's kind of where my parents grew up. That's where we spent most of our time. This is in a, in a small street um, called Mar Khayyid, which was completely destroyed. Um, and it's just, you know, a hustling, bustling street, uh, coffee shops and small nooks that you get to spend your time in. Spent 90% of my time in that area. And that... Um, this is kind of a before picture. Um, yeah. I have something like that of uh, what is going on right now and is just uh, all um, on the ground. And what I really want to say, too, is that that's what Lebanon is right now. It is not always. It is a very vibrant city. Beirut is a very vibrant city. It's a very young city and it's a city where a lot of us who had studied abroad or had other experiences were wanting to go back to and invest in and really see it get mm -hmm. out of this corruptive um, kind of uh, cycle that it had been in and pour into ministry and pour into organizations yeah. that were doing a good work um, and that's just one symbol of the destruction uh, it does not take away our hope it does not take away uh, the church's role, even though now it might be a church beyond walls, but mm. it does truly uh, get to the core of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I love what you're saying. It doesn't take away your hope. What do you feel like what is the best response we can do right now as Christians to support our brothers and sisters in Lebanon? Even, even you're not even there right now, but you, you, I know you, you are able to help to a degree. What can we do too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's, that's a good question. I think... Um, when you're away and the timing of being away, and I was telling you um, just kind of everything that w what was gonna go on into that, I was supposed to leave the day um, of the explosion, but, and, and God had kind of miraculously arranged for something else to happen and leave um, the week before. But there is an immediate response. It's going to take a global scale uh, to be able to pull off um, uh, at, the, at what we are dealing with right now. Prayer is very important. Um, we need prayer for emotional, physical, psychological uh, needs and assess and um, just well-being of the pastors and the servants in the, within the church and uh, the neighboring uh, also communities as well. So a lot of prayer is needed. Um, a lot yeah. of people are able to donate to organizations that are um, just kind of on the ground as well. Uh, a lot of finances are needed. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem is uh, that we have been dealing with an economic collapse for several months and everything has been frozen in terms of assets and all of that stuff. So it's not like there are any, um, there was any uh, reserve that people can pull from um, during this time. I'd also yeah. like to share with our listeners that the port that exploded accounts for 60% of the food for the entire country. And it, it, not, and it just uh, annihilated the entire six month reserve of wheat and everything else. And it was the only major port of entry for food. Um, wow. Lebanon is experiencing a three, uh, more than a 300% inflation of basic goods. 
And so uh, what is needed right now is really the mm -hmm. basics, is food, shelter, more than uh, thousands of people have gone homeless. Um, th so um, that's what is really going to be a priority for ministries like Heart for Lebanon and others to be able to mobilize teams to meet all of those needs. So a lot of prayer, a lot of support. Mm -hmm. um, just if, if you know people in Lebanon, check in on them. Uh, mm -hmm. They need that right now. And they need to know that their brothers and sisters uh, around the world are standing with them. Yeah, you, you were even telling me like uh, yesterday when we were talking that uh, you, the, your parents' generation has like, they've been through war, they've been through yeah. this difficult thing. So they, they're they're having to, this isn't like a new experience of like trauma. This is like something of a, 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 like a PTSD in a way that, that can be resurrected in a lot of people's minds. Yes. And and if th that's a that's a very good point because I I also I always refer to my parents' generation as the children of war. I mean that's it. when my mom and dad were uh, nine and ten years old is when a fifteen year, a year civil war broke out, and that's what they grew up in. They grew up in violence. They grew up in war. That's they grew up in shelters. They went to school from the classroom to the shelter, from the shelter to the classroom. Um, and, and their parents, which are my grandparents, had to rebuild, the, rebuild themselves uh, time and time again uh, through mm. all of that um, and tr tried to keep families together, many lost loved ones, uh, many uh, never recovered from uh, the PTSD of the war. And we did experience in the last 15 years, several years of unrest in Lebanon due to different political things, but nothing mm. like Tuesday that brings it it doesn't bring it all back. And that's if, if any, that's not the thing. It doesn't bring it all back. It puts it on a whole other scale mm -hmm. of yeah. global destruction that we honestly, um, if it weren't for our hope in Christ, there is nothing tangible. There's nothing human that says it is going to be able to be recovered anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, and and if, the, if the church, if the local church is not the only hope, I'm really not sure what people are going to cling yeah. on at this point. Um, and so it does bring back the PTSD. You have an entire generation. I, for one, also, and all of us as uh, young adults have experienced more recent um, violence. But what happened on Tuesday um, is not just going to take generations, but it's going to take a global movement of Christ followers, of churches to really mm -hmm. um, rise up and young people to stand together to be able to see how to get on the right track and just really introduce the love of Christ in this really dark time. Yeah, yeah. And just just to give us a little bit more context, you briefly mentioned this earlier, but like the economic situation in Lebanon, like that's what, something I didn't know until you told me yesterday. Like, I didn't know you guys were that in that, in that situation. Yeah. So uh, just to give you some, without going into the, I learned a lot of economic uh, terms over the last <laughs> uh, eight months that I had not known. So yeah. uh, I, I'm going to show off a little bit here, uh, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I know anything uh, fancy, but they've been on the news. So, uh, the uprising that started in Lebanon on October 17 was an anti-corruption uprising that was started as a movement by the people because the economy had already started to derail. Um, and this, this has been a result of the 30 years of uh, post-Civil War lack of uh, political reform, lack of economic reform. So since the war ended in 1990, we have spent 30 years just kind of, you know, cruising through um, the same warlords that were responsible for um, the Civil War are still in power and nothing happened to be able to uh, get that economy back in a sustainable way. On March 9, 2020, uh, Lebanon defaulted on its external debts completely. Um, there have been negotiations between the Lebanese government and the IMF that are not going well uh, to date about maybe the IMF, uh, the International Monetary Fund, coming in and doing something. Um, and during this time, the Lebanese pound, the Lebanese currency has devaluated by more than 270 uh, percent. Just to give you an idea, it used to be 1,500 Lebanese liras to the dollar. Uh, mm. It has gone up to as high as 10,000, from 1,500 to 10,000 wow. Lebanese liras to the dollar, averaging a daily about 7,500 um, right now in the black market. So the currency devaluated 
significantly. Um, the, the inflation of the price of basic goods exponentially went up at the same time, uh, about 300%. Um, the supply and demand was just out of whack and people's purchasing power and put people in food insecurity way beyond the poverty line. And I'm saying all of this without a, you know, 3.5 scale earthquake explosion going on. Yeah. So this is all just kind of going on. The World Bank is estimating the poverty to reach 60% um, in the country. Uh, and then Tuesday hits and it cuts out the one source that people of food um, and kind of, um, of import and export that people were relying on greatly, which is that port. Um, and the reasons are still unknown. Yeah. Wow. That's... Life changers, this is exactly why I wanted you guys to hear from Meili today. We need to help. We need to help Lebanon, not just because they had that explosion, but because they've been suffering and it. it's taking this to to make us to make the world like look in their direction. You know, it's taking the and it's just it's not okay. And we need to step up as brothers and sisters. So I'm I'm leaving that on the screen for you guys to go and donate, please, and and help help our brothers and sisters. But, you know, we know that as believers, the number one thing that we can do is pray. So right now, I, I want us to go into a time of prayer. If you're watching, thank you for joining us in prayer. And Meili, can you give us a couple pointers, a couple prayer requests and, and um, that we can, I know you've already shared a lot of it, but that we can really target right now in prayer. Yeah. Um, I would really like to pray for the, cho the church, the Lebanese church. Um, the Lebanese church uh, is, is, is feeling a little bit right now just tired. I'm just, for a lack of, they are tired and they want to serve and they need to assess the needs so please pray for the lebanese church to be a lighthouse um and for uh pastors to know how to lead boldly and fiercely with love um, during this time and maybe also if we could please pray for uh the families of all who have been homeless and who have lost uh, loved ones right now um that the lord will provide for them um as well yeah, amen. Can, can um, well, I guess I'll start off, and if you can uh, pray after me and, and yeah. your your mother tongue. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, uh, sorry, I for uh, just yeah. sorry if, one, if I could add one more prayer request. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for specifically for the Heart for Lebanon team right now, uh, as they go on understanding the neck the need. You know, when you're in time of crisis, the first thing you go, yeah, you clean up the debris, and we're on, uh, the team is kind of on an adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, and just uh, if we can. Pray for uh, the team to know how to respond and to hear God's voice and where he is leading them, where the greatest need is. We cannot do it all, but wherever he leads us, we want to be those agents of peace. So uh, please pray for the team for wisdom yeah. and for their ability to uh, go on in a healthy and safe way. Yeah, yeah, let's pray. I, I just feel this uh, verse rising up in my heart. Um, Isaiah 50, 58, I have it here. Um, Yeah, Isaiah 58, um, it talks about if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the, the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire with good things and make your bones strong. You shall be like a watered garden in Lebanon, like a spring of water whose waters fail not and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repair of the breach. I speak this over Heart for Lebanon. You shall be called the repair, repair of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in, or the streets, uh, the paths leading home. So, Father, I just bless uh, Heart for Lebanon and their in their work. I bless the network of churches that are partnering, um, and I just ask God that you strengthen them as they're pouring them, themselves out constantly, Lord. Right now, in this situation, in this time, as they're pouring out their energy, their strength, their resources. Um, Lord, as they are being stewards of the resources that we are sending their way, God, I just bless them to uh, operate in wisdom and, and with mercy and compassion so that they will uh, be hope, bring that hope and be that hope um, in Lebanon. And Father, we just thank you for all this, uh, the upcoming uh, partnerships and, and things of, of the different churches that are right now sending funds even the different life changers that are rising up right now to partner up and, and send funds. And God, I ask that you stir our hearts here for those of us in America or other parts of the world that aren't in Lebanon. I ask that you stir our hearts with your compassion, Jesus, to, to be your hands and feet um, where, where it is really needed right now, Father. And Lord, um, 
I thank you, God, for, for this partnership with Operation Blessing and, yes. and Heart for Lebanon. And, and Lord, I just thank you for this relationship that we have. And I bless that, Lord. And I, I thank you, God, that this, the storehouses of heaven are going to open up for Lebanon right now as they, even, even in their most difficult time, Lord, that, they, that Lebanon is go going to see your goodness, Lord, because of the church that is active and, and breathing, Lord, uh, your hope and your peace, even when everything else is in chaos, Lord. I just thank you for May Lee's family and even that, that beautiful song that went viral, God, that, that just showed the peace of Christ in the midst of chaos. And I thank you for blessing her and her family and just being for you, Holy Spirit. I just thank you that you are with them and that you're there to guide them and that you comfort them even as, as they're mourning this, these losses, Lord, that, that they're facing. And in Jesus' mighty name, I declare this. Amen. يا رب يا سو عم نجي امامك اليوم بنشكرك على كل شخص عم بيسمع هلا يا رب نجي بنجي وبنوضع لبنان امامك بنوضع لبنان بنوضع شعبه بنوضع كنيستك يا رب يا سو انه انت ترفعهم وانت تعطيهم الرجاء والتعزيه يا رب يا سو بلدنا بحاجه لك بلدنا بحاجه لصرخه لنفخه من عندك يا رب من قوتك انه انت يا رب تكون النور بهيدي الظلمه يا رب يا سو نحن من امن انه انت لوحدك في تنشل كل كل شخص موجوع كل شخص جوعان كل شخص خسر بيته يا رب يسوع ان انت تامن لهم بشكرك على هيدي الخدمه يا رب بشكرك على اوبريشن بليسنج بشكرك على البارتنرشيب تبعهم وعلى الطرق يلي انت عم 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 تسمح انه هن يكونوا كمان يا رب يكونوا عاملين سلام ببلد مثل بلدنا الحبيب لبنان يا رب يسوع بصلي بركة خاصة على جيسيكا بصلي بركة خاصة على كل مستمع ومستمعة معنا اليوم بنصلي كل هالأمور باسم يسوع المسيح أمين Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was thank beautiful. You, I, I, love your, I love your mother tongue. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, thank you for having a heart for Lebanon. And thank you for your prayers and your support. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah. And I, again, I appreciate you taking the time and thank you, thank you Life Juniors for joining as well. So thank I'm, I'm going to let you go and um, right. yeah, blessings to you. <laughs> thank you. You too. Bye. 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 Well, thank you guys for joining. As you've seen, um, we can help. We are more than able to help. And uh, like, I, like you see here on the screen, Operation Blessing is working with Heart for Lebanon and a network of local churches to provide aid for the victims of the explosion in Beirut. So please uh, go to that link on the, on the screen and let's give, let's rise up and make a difference for Lebanon. Blessings to all of you and may you be filled with the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. And if you haven't already checked out um, May Lee's video, go find it on, on um, I believe it's on Heart for Lebanon, yeah, it's on Heart for Lebanon's Facebook page, Heart for Lebanon, go check that out and, and just listen to that beautiful, beautiful song uh, of worship that um, her grandma played in the midst of chaos. So God is with us. We're in this together. See you guys soon. Blessings.